everyone, and welcome to our study of Romeo and Juliet. In this scene, we see Juliet talking to herself. This is in Act 2, Scene 5, and it takes place in the Capulet's Garden. Let's listen in to her long speech where she's alone on stage. We know this to be a soliloquy. All right, let's listen in. Scene 5, Capulet's Garden. Enter Juliet. The clock struck nine when I did send the nurse. In half an hour she promised to return. Perchance she cannot meet him. Oh, that's not so. Oh, she is lame. Love's herald should be thoughts, which ten times faster glide than the sun's beams, driving back shadows over lowering hills. Therefore do nimble pinion doves draw love, and therefore hath the wind-swift Cupid's wings. Now is the sun upon the highmost hill of this day's journey, and from nine till twelve is three long hours, yet she is not come. Had she affections and warm, youthful blood, she'd be as swift in motion as a ball. My words would bandy her to my sweet love and his to me. But old folks, many fain as they were dead, unwieldy, slow, heavy, and pale as lead. Oh, God, she comes! Enter Nurse and Peter. Oh, honey, Nurse, what news? Hast thou met with him? Send thy man away. Peter, stay at the gate. Exit Peter. Now, good, sweet nurse. O oh, Lord, why look'st thou sad? Though news be sad, yet tell them merrily. If good, thou shamest the music of sweet news by playing it to me with so sour a face. I am a-weary. Give me leave a while. Fie, how my bones ache. What a jaunt have I had. I would thou hadst my bones, and I thy news. <sighs> Nay, come, I pray thee, speak, good, good nurse, speak. Jesu, what haste! Can you not stay a while? Do you not see that I am out of breath? How art thou out of breath, when thou hast breath, to say to me that thou art out of breath? The excuse that thou dost make in this delay is longer than the tale thou dost excuse. Is thy news good or bad? Answer to that. Say either, and I'll stay the circumstance. Let me be satisfied, is't good or bad? Well, you have made a simple choice. You know not how to choose a man. Romeo. No, not he. Though his face be better than any man's, yet his leg excels all men's. And for a hand, and a foot, and a body, though they be not to be talked on, yet they are past compare. He is not the flower of courtesy, but I'll warrant him as gentle as a lamb. Go thy ways, wench, serve God. What, have you dined at home? No, no, but all this did I know before. What says he of our marriage? What of that? Lord, how my head aches! What a head have I! It beats as if it would fall in twenty pieces. My back at the other side. Oh, my back, my back! Beshrew your heart for sending me about to catch my death with jouncing up and down. If faith, I am sorry that thou art not well. Sweet, sweet, sweet nurse, tell me, what says my love? Your love says, like an honest gentleman, and a courteous, and a kind, and a handsome, and I warrant a virtuous. Where is your mother? Where is my mother? Why, she is within. Where should she be? How oddly thou repliest, your love says, like an honest gentleman, where is your mother? Oh, God's lady dear, are you so hot? Marry, come up, I trow. Is this the poultice for my aching bones? Henceforward do your messages yourself. Here's such a coil. Come, what says Romeo? Have you got leave to go to shrift today? I have. Then hie you hence to Friar Lawrence's cell. There stays a husband to make you a wife. Now comes the wanton blood up in your cheeks. They'll be in scarlet straight at any news. Hie you to church. I must another way to fetch a ladder, by the which your love must climb a bird's nest soon when it is dark. I am the drudge, and toil in your delight. But you shall bear the burden soon at night. Go, I'll to dinner. Hie you to the cell. Oh, high to high fortune, honest nurse, farewell. Exit. 
Okay, this is a very short scene, so I just let it play out its entirety. But let's go ahead and kind of review what's happened. So we have Juliet talking to herself about, oh, she's kind of eager to hear about her love and what he has to stay for her. And she's also kind of nervous, too. Nurse comes in and sends away Peter, and Juliet's like, oh, give me the news. And Nurse drags it out. She says, oh, give me, stay a while. I'm tired. Can't you see I'm out of breath? And Julia's like, oh, just come on, hurry. I want to hear. Well, Nurse admonishes her for her terrible choice in men, which I can't say I totally disagree with Nurse because look at what's happening here. And Juliet says, okay, but what does he say of marriage? And yet again, Nurse kind of you know, kind of teases her. Oh, my, my head aches, my bones. Oh, I can't talk. And finally, finally, after some prodding, Juliet pulls it out of nurse. She says that, uh, nurse says, then hie you hence to Friar Lawrence's cell. There stays a husband to make you a wife. Now come the wanton blood up in your cheeks. They'll be in Scarlet Strait knitting any news. Hie you to church. So he's basically, uh, she's basically saying that you just need to go uh, to Friar Lawrence's cell, pretend you have shrift, and go, and there you can secretly marry Romeo. And Julia is super excited by this, obviously. So, um, kind of just uh, a little bit of showing how we get from Juliet planning to get married to the marriage, and we know that she's going to pretend to have confession. All right. Well, we'll see you for the next scene. All right. Thank you for stopping in.